that you know he he considered uh, his guitar solos he he thought of them as air sculptures you know so that's a different headspace to be in to begin with you know he really was uh spontaneously composing and a lot of musicians particularly guitar players grow up in a way where they're they learn patterns and they have pre-composed guitar licks and little riffs and things that they can practice in different keys and they can use those things and it's their little bag of tricks and you know i grew up uh doing that as well and i've had to sort of unlearn all of that stuff to be able to play in a spontaneous uh, fashion uh, so I can play in context to Frank's music. Well, one of the things you say in the in the liner notes is that when you do these solos, that's when you feel closest to your dad. Yeah, anyway. I mean, may, and maybe that is the sort of the, the the personal tribute to your own. dad. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And Van Halen was an influence for you, yes, uh, as a, a kid growing up. Yeah, Eddie Van learning, Halen, learning and, to play guitar. Yeah, and uh, Randy Rhodes, big influence as well. Uh, those guys, you know. What they did uh, was they fused uh, some real strong technical uh, skill with rock music in a way that really hadn't been done. They took it to a whole uh, different level. And, you know, that became something that a lot of people gravitated towards in it, and it changed the face of music. in uh, some people would argue uh, in ways that were not so great, uh, but still, that what happened uh, when those guys came out was it raised the bar, and a lot of people really wanted to be the best that they could be technically. And you know, somewhere along the line, it became about technical gymnastics as opposed to actually making music. Uh, but those guys still always did it, you know, uh, very musically. So I was really inspired by by Eddie Van Halen and. Um, and Randy Rhodes, and, and I got hmm. to meet Edward Van Halen and work with him uh, right. on some different things. So, uh, And recently it was uh, like a real full circle experience because he came to see a show that we played where we opened for Jeff Beck, and um, he was in my dressing room. And I've been to you know a lot of his shows and been in his dressing room, and so it was uh, the tables had turned. <laughs> and, you know, And uh, we were playing a little bit of guitar for a second, and I was showing him some of the hard things that I have to play in the show, and and stuff and and uh, it was just funny because uh, he he just was looking quizzically at like I don't even know you know how your dad wrote that and and how you were able to figure out how to play it uh, you know but he kind of laughed and said uh, you know uh, who'd have thought you'd be giving me a guitar lesson oh, you know well, that's <laughs> so, that's a, that's a nice little dressing yeah. room moment we're almost up in a break here but do you mm-hmm. play your dad's instruments I do but not on tour. You know, because uh, if something were to happen, that you know, it's just not a good idea to bring those uh, out there. But uh, yeah, they're they're fantastic instruments and and pretty, um, you know, unique because he had a, a crazy approach to uh, everything musically and otherwise. So. Indeed. Well, uh, Dweezil Zappa is our guest today on Radio Times. We are talking about Zappa plays Zappa, and that's his tribute band. And again, uh, that tribute band is performing. Tonight at The Man in Philadelphia, part of a tour across the country. And uh, Dweezil Zappa joining us to talk about his own music, his dad's music, and we're playing selections from uh, some of his CDs. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Support for WHYY comes from Abington Friends School, a Quaker college preparatory school for students in preschool through grade 12. At Abington Friends, they know their students well. For all four years of upper school, students stay with the same faculty advisor, forming close relationships that often develop into lifelong friendships. Fully supported and valued for who they are and who they can be, Abington Friends helps students become more skillful at connecting, collaborating, and developing their abilities. More at abingtonfriends.net. Hugh Hur designs artificial limbs, including the ones he wears, to replace the legs he lost in a climbing accident. They have a dozen computers and muscle-like systems. My biological body will degrade in time due to normal age-related degeneration, but the artificial part of my body improves in time because I can upgrade. Hugh Hur on the next Fresh Air. This afternoon at 3 and again tonight at 7 on WHYY. 
I'm Robin Young. Join us next time for the news and these stories here and now. When you meet a soldier in uniform, what should you say? Some don't want to hear the phrase, thanks for your service. Also, people are doing it on lakes, between the Hawaiian Islands, even down the Colorado River. Stand up paddle boarding. That's Public Radio's Daily Digest of News and Culture, here and now. Today at noon on WHYY. This is Radio Times here on WHYY in Philadelphia. I'm Marty Moss Cohen talking with Dweezil Zappa, virtuosic guitar player. He also was a VJ on MTV. He developed and acted in a CBS sitcom with his sister Moon Unit, uh, that sitcom called Normal Life. He was the character of Ajax on the USA cartoon Duckman, and he also was featured on the Food Network, and he's brought his Zappa play, Zappa Band, uh, to Philadelphia. And I do want to play another uh, selection from Zappa play. Zappa. This is from their album of last year, Return of the Son of. And this is a song called Inca Roads, and it's from uh, uh, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, their 1975 album called One Size Fits All. That was uh, Inca Rhodes from uh, Zappa Plays Zappa. And, uh, Dweezil, you were telling me while we were listening to that 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 was actually one of the pieces that you used to audition your band. And that's a yeah. really complicated piece of music. Yeah, we didn't even get to the hardest part of the song. That uh, there, There's uh, a section that uh, has all these syncopated um, septuplets and everything. And it's uh, uh, one of the things that uh, was an audition piece. Number one, people had to transcribe it themselves. We didn't offer them the music. You know, I wanted to be able to to see if the musicians 
uh, first had the discipline to be able to figure it out properly and and put the time in, uh, you know. So was that listening? It, looking, yeah, looking would, at scores. No, they would have to listen, listen and write it down and learn it themselves. And then when they came in, they only got to play it with the drummer, not the whole band. So they really had to focus on only their part. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, um, you know, the people that uh, that even made it far enough to to transcribe, and they only had two days to to learn it. Now I know that uh, to learn Inca Roads and the Black Page, the, those were the two pieces. They had to transcribe and then come in and play. To do to do that in two days is impossible, and that was the point, you know, because it to was, give them something impossible. Uh, to yeah, do. if if they could if they could get even close to it, then they had a good shot at at being able to be in the band because uh, it would show they had the right mindset, discipline mm-hmm. to to learn the stuff. They were inspired enough to do it, and so the people that that did well uh, were the people that were you know in the band and still in the band. It was that your dad's approach to his musicians as well. Well, pretty much, pretty he tough. gave them some really difficult uh, challenges. You know, Steve Vai has a funny story about how my dad kept making him play different things, different time signatures. You know, like play thirteen over, you know, four, and, and like all these different things, and you know, keep challenging him uh, to do all these different things. Uh, and uh, when he finally said, "Well, I, I can't do that. That's impossible," my dad uh, smirked and said. Well, I hear Linda Ronstadt is looking for a guitar player. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, you Ouch. Know, yeah, but I mean, he he. The the point was, if somebody could could do this stuff, you know, uh, Frank would push it to the limit just to see how far they could go. Because often he could find things in them that they didn't even know they were capable of, mm. and it was amusing to him uh, to to uh, just take things to the the nth degree. And um, so when people could do it, he loved that. Well, let's go from Inca Roads to uh, your mean one, Mr. Grinch. Sure. And this is uh, you on your, actually, an album that goes back to the year 2000. So 11-year-old yeah. album. Yeah. Automatic. Uh-huh. The uh, thing about this one is that um, there was no version of uh, your mean one, Mr. Grinch, that, that ever came out uh, that was the, actually from the cartoon version itself. So I, I transcribed it from a VHS videotape off the TV uh, and I played all the guitar parts that were in the original orchestral arrangement, uh, and then I added a, a little rock element to it that didn't previously exist. And it also features your brother, Amit. Mm-hmm. Let's listen. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. You're a monster, Mr. Grinch. Your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spiders. You've got garlic in your soul, Mr. Grinch. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. I know the Grinch is tall Christmas cause it's hard for us to size us too small. I know the Grinch is tall Christmas cause it's hard for us to size us too small. You nauseate me, Mr. Grinch. With a nauseous super nos. You're a crooked jerky jockey and you drive a crooked horse, Mr. Grinch. Your soul is an appalling dump heap, overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of rubbish imaginable. Mangled up, entangled up nuts. And that's uh, Dweezil and Ahmet Zappa. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. And uh, yeah. kind of a nice digression. You yeah. two had a band, didn't you, Z? Yeah, yeah. We played uh, for a couple years. 